I'm Linda Strande. I work at Sondek, which is the Department of Water and Sanitation in Developing Countries, and it's situated within AAVOG, which is the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology. We're trying to develop new technologies for sanitation in low and middle income countries. We're also working on trying to understand the fundamental science behind the treatment mechanisms. We're working on value chain management and knowledge dissemination. Mais malheureusement, ces technologies ne sont pas bien connues et ne sont pas bien adaptées dans le contexte des pays africains. C'est la raison pour laquelle des opérateurs comme l'ONAS au Sénégal, l'ONEA au Burkina Faso ont développé des collaborations avec des institutions de recherche comme le SANDEC, avec des universités africaines et des universités européennes pour quelque part combler le gap de connaissances qui existe dans le traitement des bouts de vidange. J'ai l'habitude euh, euh, de faire une analogie un peu de dire euh, c'est comme si l'ONAS aujourd'hui était euh, cette petite, ce jeune homme quand même très beau mais euh, aveugle. Bon, aveugle peut-être c'est trop dire mais, mais, mais qui a une cécité qui ne permet pas à bien voir. Alors j'ai dit que c'est la recherche aujourd'hui qui nous permet de lui donner le bâton pour jauger sa, à sa piste. En espérant que cette recherche-là va continuer de faire davantage de la collaboration pour que maintenant la remette donc, puisse revenir et que ce jeune homme-là puisse retrouver l'usage de ses yeux. Je pense que cette collaboration qui s'est inscrite entre l'ONAS et le SANDEC avec des industriels va permettre non seulement de développer de bonnes technologies de traitement des bouts mais va permettre de comprendre quelles sont les différentes possibilités de valorisation des sous-produits. Pour la première fois en Afrique, on va essayer de réfléchir pour voir y a-t-il une possibilité de transformer les bouts de pour avoir de l'énergie, pour faire du combustible. Ça, c'est extrêmement intéressant. Sanitation, in general, in most countries in sub-Saharan Africa, has been a problem. This has been there for a very long time now. And the reason is that the population has been growing at a very fast rate, but the same cannot be said about the infrastructure development. The vast majority of households in urban environments, are, their sanitation needs are met through on-site systems, so pit latrines or septic tanks. But typically, when on-site systems are installed, there's little or no thought given to what happens when they become full. In most uh, slums, uh, when toilets fill up, they are abandoned for a number of reasons. One of them can be lack of access to empty it. Another one can be the poor construction such that it cannot be emptied. And another one can even be the lack of the community to mobilize the money to pay for the emptying. So what happens is private entrepreneurs spring up to fill this gap of emptying the on-site systems and transporting the sludge. And frequently when you're driving through town, you'll see vacuum truck operators that are collecting and transporting sludge. Il faut savoir tout simplement que c'est un peu difficile. La rentabilité est plus ou moins moyenne parce qu'il y a trop quand même de social qu'on fait. Imaginez, imaginez que moi, là où j'habite, n'est-ce pas, dans le quartier, pratiquement personne ne paie la vidange parce que j'ai grandi avec eux. Secondo aussi, euh, le prix du coût de vidange tourne aux environs de 2000 francs le mètre cube. Si, par exemple, toutes les stations fonctionnent, bien sûr, mais si, les, si toutes les stations ne fonctionnent pas, on a tendance à augmenter le prix, voire 2 500 le mètre cube ou bien 3 000 francs le mètre cube. Donc ça, c'est selon les, 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 les stations disponibles, les stations de dépotage, je veux dire par là. Et les problèmes que nous rencontrons aussi, bon, on a des problèmes avec la sécurité, pas sécurité, je veux dire les services d'ordre, la police, la gendarmerie et tout ça, on a des problèmes avec. Mais ce qui nous aide le plus dans notre boulot, c'est les services d'hygiène qui interdisent le dépotage sauvage, qui interdisent à ce qu'on en fasse, n'est-ce pas, devant les maisons ou dans les maisons même. But the problem is, at the household level, they frequently cannot afford the emptying fee, and so they're forced to manually empty their systems or hire somebody that can manually empty them, and then the fecal sledge is directly dumped into the environment. Here in Accra, uh, we're, we're sitting right on the ocean where all of the fecal sludge that's, that's generated every day is dumped into the ocean without any treatment. It's roughly a thousand cubic meters or over a hundred cesspit emptying trucks every day are, are dumping their fecal sludge um, just up the beach from where we are now. I think that you touch the doigt vraiment the problem problem essential. We know our vies africaines. L'assainissement collectif, donc, euh, qu'on dit euh, conventionnel, ne touche pas à l'ensemble des populations. 
Aujourd'hui, 90 à 95% des populations n'ont pas accès à cet assainissement-là. Et les autres, donc, ont des systèmes euh, autonomes. Mais il faudrait euh, qu'il y ait une gestion euh, concertée de, de ce secteur-là. Et ça part aussi par la recherche, parce que aussi, les bouts de vidange, en tant que tels, il faut savoir les traiter, il faut savoir les valoriser pour dynamiser les secteurs. Now, the new thinking there is that why don't we try to generate wealth from waste? We're developing waste-based businesses that are using waste uh, for different energy endpoints or agricultural endpoints, making a profit and using the, that profit in those businesses to incentivize alternatives to dumping straight into the environment. If we can create value-added end products, for example, using it as a fuel in industry, then we could create financial drivers to help fuel the whole sanitation chain. Yeah, for example, there's, uh, there are um, uh, new projects here where IMI is involved, for example, where we are trying to um, co-compost um, fecal sludge with other household or um, market waste. And uh, the idea there is to actually um, uh, pelletize this compost and to use this one for, for agriculture. Another uh, business model that we're working to develop is using fecal sludge as an industrial fuel. So partially drying it and then using it as a carbon neutral fuel in industrial boilers or cement kilns. And depending on how much they, they pre-dry the sludge, Oftentimes the cement kilns are getting net energy out of it. And not only are they getting energy out, but the non-combustible portion um, of the sludge, the ash, can then be incorporated into the, into the clinker, which is a, a precursor to, to Portland cement. So it's a really nice closed loop uh, management solution. We are also looking here at the people who are producing bricks because they use a lot of firewood. What we are looking at in uh, using fecal sludge is to make sure we save the cutting down of trees that is uh, on a rampage uh, because this is the main source of fuel for various industries, for different rural homes. So you find that there is a lot of deforestation. From the preliminary results that we're already getting here in Ghana, um, we're finding that the, the calorific value of the sludge is on average uh, quite a bit higher than a lot of the agricultural byproducts that a lot of industries um, use as fuels. And one of the areas that I focus on is the treatment of fecal sludge before composting. We pour the fecal sludge in a ratio of two is to one of septage to public latrine on a filter bed and we dewater it before we use it in composting. We use this sludge in different combination with slaughter waste to produce biogas. After the biogas treatment, the, the liquid that is produced, I also use it in the development of liquid fertilizer. There is a lot of interest in the production of biochar. And this biochar, we believe that one can also produce it from uh, sewage sludge. And this also something for the future that we are looking at. Biochar is sort of like charcoal that is produced out of biological material. We also uh, have other components, collect data that is going to be used in the financial flow modeling. The idea also is to see um, the inputs and outputs and try to see how whether financially this kind of, of process we are looking at is likely to be um, economically viable. So we find that using it as another alternative source of fuel would also help save some of the forests or green pastures of, of the country. So essentially what we're doing is, is rebranding wastewater and fecal sludge treatment plants as production facilities. So no more are they money sinks, but money generators. And this makes it a lot easier to, to justify or to rationalize building these systems and a lot more financially vi viable to keep them running.